guys, I hope you're good. I am in Morgai, um, just outside Glasgow, with Joe, and we're just about to start walking the West Highland Way. Our day started in Glasgow city centre, where we'd stayed the night before. It was then a short train ride from Queen Street to the Glasgow suburb of Mulgai, the start point of the walk. We dropped our bags off with the baggage transfer. They would be delivered to our accommodation every day, meaning we only needed to carry a small day bag each. The start of the route is really well marked with an obelisk and an arch. From Mulgai we will head north over the following six days until eventually making it to the Fort William, 96 miles away. That's the plan anyway. We set off full of excitement and a few nerves. This walk had been on my to-do list for ages, but one thing or another kept getting in the way. Now that it was finally happening, it seemed unreal. Everyone told me day one is boring, but I disagreed. You start off walking through a country park. It was mostly flat and the path was well defined. It was a great warm up and would provide a good contrast to the scenery we were looking forward to later in the week. What a view, or what a view it would be if we could actually see it. The West Island Way was opened in 1980 and was Scotland's first officially designated long distance route. About seven miles in we came to the Beech Tree Inn, where we stopped to look at their menagerie of animals. It was one of these animals that caused me to end up on the floor. Are you okay though? And just so we know the reason that Lorna fell down, she was excited about getting her photo taken with the dog. Rubbish! Although it was hilarious, my fall also hammered home to me how quickly this could have been all over, so I vowed to be more careful going forward. I think I can feel blood running down my elbow, but I'm too cold to check. My pain was soon forgotten by making some new friends. The last couple of miles into Drimmen were uphill on paved roads which gave us some great views. So the West Highland Way continues down there but we're going to walk past it because um, our B&B is just up the road. We finished day one feeling optimistic for the rest of the week. That's 12 miles done, 84 to go. I couldn't wait to start our second day of the West Highland Way. We left a little later than planned, but were soon back on the trail. Immediately there were proper grass hills and the field changed. We were in proper countryside now. Well, until we weren't and we were back on the main road a couple of minutes later. But then we were in a field and a couple of miles later we emerged at the entrance of a forest. We got our first look at Connick Hill and Loch Lomond and I was so excited for what was to come. You can bypass Connick Hill and take a flat path, which I'd recommend in poor weather, but the rain gods were on our side and after a quick break to refuel we were ready for the challenge. Connick Hill is 1,184 feet tall and its summit crosses the Highland Boundary Fault 
the border between the highlands and the lowlands of Scotland. Just starting the climb now. I'm feeling it a bit. How are you finding it, Joe? I'm feeling it a bit. <laughs> oh. It was a steep climb with quite a lot of water on the path and loose stones. I think it could be very challenging in the winter. Before long we were at the top and treated to the most amazing views down over Loch Lomond. I so want to visit some of those islands. The West Highland Way didn't go all the way to the top of the hill, which was a bit disappointing, but we'd have plenty more climbing in store. Cows, I'm just seeing cows. Okay, okay. Let's be careful. Seeing Highland cows was definitely on my West Highland Way bucket list. They are the most beautiful creatures. If you watch my daily videos, you'll know that there was an incident with a dog and a cow. Cows, cows, cows. It's so important to keep dogs on leads and away from livestock. At the bottom of the hill you enter another wooded area which is inside the camping management zone where camping is restricted and falls under different rules to the rest of Scotland. We stopped for lunch in Balmaha and then continued with the false impression that the rest of the day along the lockside would be nice and flat. In fact, it was far from it. There are lots of up and downs, but the wee beaches were gorgeous. Something that we learned pretty quickly was that just because the miles tell you somewhere is halfway, that's not really a true reflection. A flat mile at the start of the day feels very different to a hilly mile when you've already been walking for hours. The second half of the day was no more technically difficult than the first, but we definitely felt it more, and it was a great feeling to make it to our hostel where a warm meal and bed awaited us. That's another 15 miles done, bringing our total to 27, with a cheeky 69 to do. We had an early start the next day, just as the sun was rising across the water. I laid some flowers for a relative whose ashes are scattered in the loch, and had a quiet moment of reflection before starting our long walk. The terrain was very similar to the previous evening, a lot of undulating and uneven parts, but we were able to maintain a stiff pace for the first couple of miles. We spotted a few wild campers along the way. Fair play to them, but I was very grateful to have a real bed and bathroom at the end of each day and somewhere to dry our gear. Five miles in and the terrain had not improved. There were some very narrow paths with steep drops, as well as big rocks and tree roots that needed some scrambling at points. It was frustrating, but I wasn't going to risk injury by rushing. May is the most popular month to walk the West Highland Way, so why were we doing it in October? Well, there were a few practical reasons. I always have annual leave for my birthday in October and accommodation is easier to find. 
Also, you still have a fair chance of good weather. You won't be bothered by midges, the route will be less busy, and the highlands just look incredible in their autumnal colours. The only big downside is limited daylight hours, which is why we chose to walk over six days rather than five. Ten miles in we stopped for lunch and a paddle before tackling the last ten miles of the day. Thankfully within a couple of miles the path did smooth out and it was a lovely break for our feet. However it did mean we had to pick up the pace to make up for our lost time. By now we had navigated the entire eastern shore of Loch Lomond and although it marked just how far we'd come. I was still sad to leave it behind. In hindsight, this campsite at Inveraden would have been a good place to stop for the night, but we were following the suggested six-day itinerary on the West Highland Way website, and continuing to Crane Larrick, a further 6.5 miles away. By this point, I was really feeling it. My legs were very sore, and my energy levels were depleting rapidly. I had to keep reminding myself why I was doing it and how much it meant to me. This was an important milestone for me in my recovery after being so ill earlier in the year. I needed to prove to myself that I could do this. The last thing I needed was a diversion. After traipsing through ankle deep mud for half a mile, we made it back on trail, but I was feeling really bad at this point. The hotel is getting further and further away. It was an hour away an hour ago, and now it's 45 minutes away. Um, so we're not sure where to come off of the West Highland Way to get into the town. Eventually we made it to the hotel in the dark where I was violently sick and had to think very hard about whether to continue the next day. Day three's 20 miles brings us up to 47 with 49 to go. Day four begins, um, I'm alive, which was not guaranteed last night. Um, yeah, I feel okay. Um, I'm gonna just have to be very honest with myself, listen to my body. There are a couple of train stations on the way, so I've got bug out points if needed. Um, but take some time to appreciate this view that we missed arriving in the dark last night. I really wasn't feeling better, but I was determined to at least make it halfway so I could say I'd tried. After a long climb back up through the forest, we got back on the trail and I just tried to take my time and enjoy as much as possible. Our hotel the night before was incredible, but if I was to offer some advice, I'd say stay as close to the route as possible. Really look at the maps because we were well over a mile off the way, which does add up. Saying that though, you want to be near shops and facilities, so it is a difficult balance. Alongside this graveyard was once the site of St Fillan's Priory that was established by Robert the Bruce in 1318. St Fillan had brought Christianity to the area from the island of Iona. And talking about Robert the Bruce, this is the Lochan of the Lost Sword, and legend has it, during the Battle of Dalry, Bruce and his men threw their weapons into the Lochan, where they remain to this day. Before I knew it, we'd made it to the halfway point at Tyndrum. I was so glad I didn't get the train because I was feeling so much better. The rest of the terrain was pretty easy going and I zipped along. 
Joe Zapp was telling us how fast we were going and I had to actually slow myself down a few times. That train had just passed through the station at the Bridge of Orkey. In no time at all we could make out our hotel. I really don't know how I carried on after feeling so awful the night before, but I am very glad that I did. This was a brilliant day's walking and really restored my confidence in myself. That being said, I was very grateful to make it to the hotel. Another 15 miles done meant we were over halfway with 62 miles done and only 34 to go. We left the Bridge of Orkey early the next morning. It was going to be another long day and we wanted all the daylight hours we could get. I still wasn't feeling 100%. I definitely had some sort of tummy bug. The day started with a long climb but seeing the night turn to morning and hearing the birds and the deer calling to each other was brilliant. Then when we saw the deer, it was magical. I'd prepared myself to cut the day's walk short if needed and walk longer the next day. I had the flexibility to extend the walk into a seventh day too if needed. This really lifted a weight from my shoulders and apparently from my feet too because just like that we'd arrived in Glencoe more than two hours ahead of our deadline. I was over the moon to make it. I remember my first time driving from Glasgow to Fort William and being speechless by the beauty in Glencoe. Now that we were walking here, it really reiterated how far we'd actually come. After a long break, we were ready for the next challenge. Ah, just starting the ascent of the Devil's Staircase, which is the highest point of the West Highland Way. The path of the Devil's Staircase was built under the instruction of General Wade, and his men were the first to give it its name. Later, when men failed to return home after a night in the pub, it was said that they'd been claimed by the devil. Highest point of the West Highland Way. At over 1800 feet, the Devil's Staircase is the highest point of the West Highland Way and the thing that most people warn you about. To be honest, I didn't find it that difficult. Maybe because we were used to the hills by then, or maybe because we'd expected something so much worse. From the top, the views out over Rannoch Moor were otherworldly. Look at it. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I think it's just finally hit me that we're actually doing it. This is why, this is why we put ourselves through everything. All of the training, all of the worry and the sleepless nights, and all the planning and the last week. This is what it was for. That moment I had up there was almost spiritual. And then I vomited. Highs and lows. The walk down the hill to our hostel was long and painful, but eventually we made it, and a kind man even gifted me some bread. So I ended the day with a smile. That's 81 miles down, and only 15 to go. It's 
the last time we're doing this. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, I'm excited. Feeling strong, just 15 miles today. Again, the day started with a steep climb and the rain was already heavy. I was feeling calm and determined. There hadn't been many times on the walk I believed I would finish, but now, so close to the end, almost nothing would get in my way. I knew I would have to take things slowly, but that meant more time for admiring the scenery. Well, as much as you can do through thick clouds and strong winds. We were being battered by the weather and I loved it. It made me feel so alive. Where is Ben Nevis, Joe? Is that behind that cloud over there? <laughs> there she is! In my mind's eye, I could see myself at the finish line and I kept hold of that image to push me on. As a section on its own, this would be a fairly easy day's walking, but being the sixth consecutive day and having walked over 80 miles already, it was tough. I had a couple of niggling injuries and I was so tired. I couldn't wait to get to the end, to climb into bed and not have to set an alarm. As we started the long descent towards Fort William, I couldn't believe it was almost over. Day one seemed like a lifetime ago, but also the week had whizzed by in a blur. I was ready for the rest, but I wasn't quite ready to go back into the real world. One mile to go. This was the original end of the West Highland Way, but we've got just a bit further to go. The last couple of miles are a bit of an anti-climax. When you're on the path, everyone knows what you're doing and there's a buzz and a camaraderie. Then suddenly you're back in civilization and it's almost over. But you know what you've just done and how far you've just come. That's it, we've made it. 96 miles. We're at the end of the West Highland Way. 